Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And it's time for part 11 of my How to Paint HeroQuest series. And we're working on the Barbarian and the Wizard. And these are the last two models from that starter box set. Prepared the same way we prepared all the other models in the series. A little bit of Zenith will spray there on the Barbarian you saw just to give a bit of shading under his arms and stuff. I won't really go into too much about how to prepare the models. That is one of the first videos I did, so check out the playlist if you want to have a look at that. Now, this is primarily a contrast paint scheme for speed and kind of getting the model on the table quickly but we do use a couple of non-contrast paints we've used there the silver onto the barbarian sword and now we're moving on to games workshop retributor armor color to give a brass or gold effect to just put some richness into the model and uh, you know make them look like the bold adventurers they are doing with some gold and things showing on them there not too much on the barbarian though just a bit around his waist a couple of bits on his braces and things and similar with the uh, wizard actually he's probably the less ornamented of the heroes we did the Dwarf and the Elf last week, and there's a bit more gold kind of on those models. Now, um, I did these models in a batch with the Dwarf and the Elf. So if you're watching how we're doing the paint scheme here and thinking, hang on, you're following the same colour order that you did with the Dwarf and the Elf, I did a batch of all four models, and I've separated the footage out, and that just really did speed up the painting process uh, quite dramatically. Now, I like to do metallics first before we move on to contrast paint. And I have, I suppose, tried to previously justify why from a painting perspective, but I really don't think there's a great deal of difference, if I'm honest. Just personal preference. Just be really, really careful, as you should at all times, to keep whatever paint layer you're using, you know, within the lines. And try and do it so no white is showing through. Take the paint right up to the border of where you're going to put your next paint so you don't have those kind of white edges showing between the next couple of layers. So for me, personal preference, I could justify why I do the metallics first, and I do think there are a couple of reasons that do justify it, but people have got their own opinions, and you know what, I don't really suppose it matters a great deal, but for me, I think it flows better um, as we're doing it. So when you're using the contrast paint, on the big areas you saw there, the, the brush was quite loaded up with paint, because that's how it works, it settles into the cracks and it gives you the shading and tones. I'm taking a much smaller brush here though, and going, putting very, very small amounts on the strapping on the barbarian sandals so i'm using it slightly differently because normally you would sort of not flood the model but you do put quite a lot on to let it soak and settle in the cracks and that is how it works and that's how it gets the contrast piece but on the very small bandings on his feet i really was using it more like a normal paint which is fine because it's a small area it's not really going to do that now moving on to the wizard see they're taking the same leather color around his pack uh, and just onto his legs and this is how we diversify the model with the same paint so we're using exactly the same paints on the two models here for the most part but they are going to look completely different at the end and it's due to the volume of the area we're putting these paints on so we're moving on to this kind of gore of fur color and that's going on to the barbarian's waist here there's areas on his legs you can see um, that the fur is sticking out from from the kind of leg armor if you'd call it i know it's cloth and fur but it's still sort of armor and around his waist here so lots of areas with this natural color on so we could have painted the cloth around the barbarian's waist you could have done that in that red color we're going to use and move on to later you'll see it being put on the wizard but if you did that it would make the model very very similar looking in the volume of color we're using so although using the same colors because you're dialing up or down the volume of the color uh, that's across the model it does make them look very very different even with the same paints now we're using a uh, wood color on his staff here i did contemplate doing his entire staff in kind of a metallic gold you'll see that color later but i just thought a little bit of wood will work quite nicely now the barbarian now you see we've got all the brown colors on and now we're covering the entire model in the gullum and flesh color now when you put in this on you can see here quite a large volume and we'll let it pool into the muscular um, cracks or the crevices if you do a single sort of thinner layer, he'll end up with a lot more paler flesh. You could do two, three, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go to four, but you could put multiple layers of this on and each layer will darken the flesh up. So it depends on how sort of dark skinned you want the barbarian to do. I did do two layers. Uh, first layer, as you saw there, let it pool a little bit, relatively thick. Second layer was very, very thin. Um, and basically at the end of the paint scheme, before we did the wash, I just put a second layer on, but very, very, very thin. And we don't show that. So now moving on to the hair. Now this is more of a play really, see what um, we can make him look. I want him to look like a blonde barbarian. So we're mixing the two different yellows, the Nazdreg yellow, which is a very, very golden dark yellow, and the Badman yellow, which is a very bright yellow. So we're putting on, on the darker one, and just dropping patches of the bright yellow on there, and letting these two paints merge together to give a real different kind of hair colour um, on the barbarian. I think it's interesting to experiment like this, and I do find contrast paints do flow and blend very, very well together. Now, um, 
I did these four models in a batch with the Dwarf and the Elf from last week, which I'm following the same colour scheme. So it seems odd that I'm skipping on to a Skeleton Horde colour, but if you watched last week's video, you know that this got used in a fair few parts of the Dwarf and the Elf. And I'm taking the Skeleton Horde onto the trousers of the wizard here, because I wanted them to look a bit more kind of pale and plain. And I think Skeleton Horde's a nice colour for clothing, actually, to make that kind of almost canvasy coloured clothing. Now the Nasdreg yellow, which you've just seen us using the Barbarian there, um, putting that onto the head of his staff. And I think Nasdreg Yellow, if you're doing this without any metallics, I think is a really nice way of doing almost a non-metallic gold colour, so works effectively. And a potential I did think about was doing the whole staff in that Nasdreg Yellow, but I think that the combination we've done, I think, works quite well. Now, moving on to Wizard's Clothing, choosing to do red. And if you look at the entire series, I've used red in quite a lot of the models, uh, even the, the bad guys, so to speak. Um, I think it's just an effective, bold, nice looking colour. And again, as I said before, we could have done that on the Barbarian, but chose not to because it would separate the models here. Now the rock the Barbarian is stood on, just taking a bit of the Mantis Warrior Green and putting little patches across there because we're going to look at it, it makes it look like the plants and things are growing on the rock. Two ways you could have do it, you could have put the green on first and then the rock colour after, or um, rock colour and the green, but because we were using the green in that flow, like I said before, painting all four models at once with the Dwarf and the Elf, that's when we chose to do it. Now, if you've watched the scenery set, the Sorcerer's kind of table, we did um, Majos Purple on that table to make it look a bit more wizardly. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Why not take this Majos Purple colour and do this on the robes of the wizard, uh, as though maybe that's kind of like a, a colour that the wizard's orders uh, perhaps use. So making him look a little bit like the bad guy, because the bad guy we did when we did the Sorcerer, we did use Majos Purple on the Sorcerer as well but I think it almost makes it look like a wizardly order that's around the, le the realms where these guys are. So that was quite interesting. Now onto really the last of the contrast paints. So Basilicanum Grey we've used in all the scenery, if you've watched those sets, so across the doors and the flooring stuff, ties the models together into the scenery that they're walking around, putting it over the top of the green you saw before, the green that's going to represent the kind of plant growth on there. And it has had time to dry. There's been probably 20 minutes since you put that green on, so it's mostly dried. And then on the base of the sorcerer there. So, and that is the contrast stage. So, a very, very quick um, paint scheme. The only thing we've got left to do is the uh, wizard's hair, you can see there. And I've kept him to this stage because I want to do his hair grey, making him look a little bit aged, you know, a bit Gandalf the Grey type thing um, in terms of his, his physical appearance in his head and his hair colour, um, and works quite nicely uh, on there. Now, I've let them thoroughly, thoroughly dry before this stage because this is a wash stage that we're covering the entire model in the Seraphim Sepia shade. So really do leave it. I think I left it the following night before putting this shade colour on, because if you put it on too quick, you will move and reactivate that contrast paint. And you certainly don't want that, so there's no point in rushing, just leave it to really thoroughly dry. So a really good layer of this shade. You don't want it pooling up in any places. You don't want big uh, bubbles and lumps building. So if you do, just move it around the brush. And here are the finished models. Really like how the Barbarian has turned out. I think the contrast methods work particularly well on this flesh and the variety of browns and shades you've got there. And the wizard, I think, has gone a little bit dirty, if I'm entirely honest, and went a little bit too heavy with the shade. You could absolutely correct that with just a little bit of normal paint onto his face and stuff, but um, still like the model. And for the speed of the colour scheme, really impressed. And I think the Barbarian, for me, probably tops the set off really, really nicely. So if you enjoyed that, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, and I will see you on another video.